say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Mrs. Farmer. Hi. You got a Hawaiian shirt on. That's right, I do. How do you like my new camouflage? I like your camo a lot better than the normal. You know what has happened in our lives? Hmm. Okay, anytime we vacation, it's about the food. That's right. Every place we go now, like we did a show in Cincinnati not not too long ago. We found out about all the the German influences, all the great German food up there. So, on Hawaii, you barely like Japanese food. That's right. (laughs) And it's some of the best Japanese food I've ever had in my life. When we start looking at the... what had happened over the years with the population of the island of Oahu, back in late 1800s, the Japanese came over and started working on the pineapple plantations. Mm-hmm. They brought the food cultures with them. Then the, the Korean influences and the island influences. And all of a sudden, there's this fusion of wonderful food That's everywhere right. you go. So now when we go on vacation, it's all about the food. It is. And, you know, everywhere we go, we're fascinated with, let's try this restaurant, let's talk to this guy, let's talk to this guy. But I want to bring back an idea that's a little bit different that folks here can incorporate into their diet. And something easy. Something Always easy. easy. Mm-hmm. So we went to a couple restaurants, and my buddy Koa. I liked him. Good kid. <laughs> How could you not like Koa? Good kid. We need he, to adopt him. I liked him. I think he's already got parents. Oh, does he? Okay. Plus, we'd have to write him into the will. And oh, all that. that's true. Okay. But anyhow, he was a genuine good guy. He was. And he would, so we'd say, we want to try something different. We'll try this. We want to try that. And he told us where the best poke was, which is a um, basically ahi Very in good. a marinade raw in a, in a kind of a Gingery. yummy salad yeah. and wonderful. Mm, mm, mm. If you want, if you want the best noodle bowl in the world, goodness gracious, how many restaurants could we choose from where we had just right. great noodle bowls? So, we went out for breakfast one day, and I said, mm-hmm. Cole, where do we need to go? I said, we want something. He said, I said, what's unique here for breakfast? He said, oh, he said, loco moco. I said, loco what? He Sounds said, like a loco, drink. loco moco. Like coco. He said, you have to go to this such and such cafe. He says, they have it over short ribs. You I like said, that? well, tell me, tell me what it is. He said, well, it's rice mm-hmm. with either Spam. Spam is huge over there. Right. Spam's on the menu. I actually there. got some, I got some Spam yeah, over there. You, I think you can even get it at McDonald's. But the most common is hamburger. Mm-hmm. So I started thinking, okay, I've got all this venison That's true. burger that I need to use up. So how do you take your venison and make it taste kind of special just for this dish? Minced onions, dried minced onions. It gives it kind of a Salisbury steak kind right. of taste and presentation. And you remember when Dad did his little sliders? Mm-hmm. Just to flatten them out and putting those right. onions on there give that taste? Okay. You know what? It works. So if you have some venison and you want to use it on this carb-filled breakfast. Right. So basically, here's <laughs> what a loco moco is. I started looking up the history on this. Post-war, there were some kids who were hanging out and listening to the jukebox, and they, they were looking for some kind of snack, mm-hmm. and they wanted to be a little bit different from everybody else. So they came up with rice. Mm-hmm. Now, we're going to change it up a bit. Say you're in deer camp, and you've got some deer you want to use. How about grits? That's right. We yeah. got it all. Yeah. So we got some rice. That's, you wanted the rice. Yeah. I got some grits. A little pineapple on the side. So what we're going to do is take a hamburger mm-hmm. or a venison burger if you have it. If you clean out your freezer because right. it is hunting season, you're going to put another deer in there or two. This is a great way to do that. Make you a great big old patty. Put some minced onion, a little salt and pepper on that. Put that on top of there. Mm-hmm. My mouth is this watering. Is, this is the craziest dish I've ever this seen. This was. Then take two <laughs> eggs over easy, put on top of your mm-hmm. hamburger, and then I'm going to show you an easy gravy recipe. You know how sometimes you, you, you break down and you get the store-bought gravy? Right. It's pretty daggone good. you got to have homemade gravy. So I tasted their gravy over there. And I'm pretty sure they're pouring good. out of a can. Yeah. And I thought, okay, I can do this. I'm going to show you the easiest. You're usually the gravy queen, but I, 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 this was on my mind. I had to try it. I tried it. 
and it was beautiful. That brings me to the next question. We get new viewers all the time, all the time. Tim, why are you wearing a glove on your hand? I have nerve damage. I lost the use of my right arm right here. It was almost completely taken off. Now, that didn't stop me from pulling a bow back with my teeth. Here's a shot of that. And we actually had somebody say, oh, you edited that shot. Well, I have actually won tournaments against two-handed people many, many, many times in my life. Here's me taking a deer. Here's me taking more, 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 more deer, 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 deer. This is the way, I mean, we've taken three at a time because that's meat in the freezer. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people hunt for the big trophy buck. If you live in an area where management is the key and you have a lot of does and you can take does, take does to manage the population. The meat tastes great. The meat is delicious. So we're gonna use some of that meat tonight. We're gonna to take our meat, pat it out, and we're gonna take, I don't know, maybe a, oh, half a tablespoon, three quarters of a tablespoon of minced onions and roll into that. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. We're gonna fry that up. Then we're gonna take that and set that on top of our rice and our grits. Now again, normally this would just be rice over there. They didn't use grits, it was my idea. You That's like my carb. When I'm going out to the woods mm -hmm. and I'm hunting and I need, need some grits. carbs, I'm gonna have grits. <laughs> now what we're gonna do is the same skillet. And we're gonna do two eggs over easy. Now, I taste this. This is what happens when you cook a lot. You, you understand, you can taste something right. and say, I know, what's, I know what's in that. And that's the glorious thing about this. So, so much of the gravy that you get in a jar, yeah, that's so good, yeah, but probably is, you know, loaded with stuff you probably shouldn't eat, which is probably what we're doing here anyway. So I'm gonna take a bouillon cube, and everything's about getting it done quickly here. Right. Now, I've never measured this, but we're gonna do just enough for this. So I'm gonna say we've got, what do you think, three quarters of a cup there? Probably. Uh, probably go three quarters of that bouillon cube because it gets pretty salty. Better than bouillon. And I'm gonna take probably, oh, I don't know. I'm gonna say that much. Whatever that may be. One third of a tablespoon. Minced onions. I'm just gonna take enough, third of a teaspoon, half a teaspoon. I'm gonna let that come to a boil. And when that comes to a boil, I'm gonna take some cornstarch and water, equal parts. About equal parts, yeah. And I'm gonna thicken that up. And this is, the perfect gravy. Last step, Mrs. Farmer. This is like, this is huge. This is a huge meal. Think of that. Mm-hmm. See the gravy in the bottom? All right. <laughs> is that not beautiful? That is beautiful, actually. That is a loco moco, Kentucky style with grits. All so right. this is the thing that we love to do is go find something and bring it back and make it our own and share that with you. What else do you need? That's a whole meal. That's right. Mm, 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 that is mm. good. Okay, we're gonna eat some more of this. Mm -hmm. and we're gonna come back with something. What else do they grow in Hawaii? They have macadamia nuts. Macadamia nuts. And we okay. got to crack it and eat one fresh right out the. We went to a farm where mm -hmm. they grew them. That was fun. Now, do you remember our pecan encrusted walleye? Mm -hmm. You had some fish there. That was macadamia nut and pancake. It's delicious. You they ate, didn't tell us what they did. It was my did. order. I think you yeah. ate it all. I did, but it, it was so delicious. <laughs> it was good. So I looked at that. I eyeballed that and tasted it, so on and so forth. Right. Del oh, it was delicious. We're going to have that in a minute. After we eat a bite of this and clean up, we'll be back with another wonderful recipe that you can do with the fish that you've caught. Yeah. It'd be good for striper. Yeah, they would. We stopped by this little place here. But they actually grow these things. That was fun too. And they actually let you reach into a little bin and crack one right. and take them out. And the chickens were everywhere. They have wild chickens over there. <laughs> and they were. This was full. We ate most. That of was them. full. So I tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna probably get like a third of a cup of each um, macadamia nuts and panko. You can eat your handy dandy 1950s chopper. That's that the we best found chopper in the world. Store. That's right. And we're gonna oh, do yeah. two little small pieces. We're not doing anything huge here. Um, this will be our lunch slash or dinner dish. Isn't that cool little that is nice. I love this. Let's see what we got so far. You're getting there. Yeah. Perfect. So whatever we get out of here, we're gonna do it equal with panko. So passively sitting over here, off to the left, we've got our same skillet that we used for the hamburger, which we wiped out and put a little bit of butter and a little bit of oil. But this would be good on any white flaky type fish. You could use this on 
A striper, if you catch them here in Kentucky. Right. Walleye, that'd be good. Walleye that'd be, good. be really good. Of course, walleye's good. I can eat walleye raw. We're going to beat two eggs up really bad. We're going to give them a black eye. Okay. You know what, Ms. Farmer? I think, you're I good. think for what we're getting, what we're doing, that's probably enough. We'll snack on so the last. So just equal parts, whatever you, whatever you're doing. I think that's enough to coat these. How much of this do you want? About the same amount. You tell me when. Perfect. Now we're going to put that egg on there to hold yeah. our wonderful mixture Cody. of pan coal and macadamia nuts. You know there were tr not macadamia trees everywhere. Remember you everywhere. crunched them on your car everywhere. Oh, everywhere. You smell that already. It smells delicious. It's those nuts. Now I'm going to say probably four minutes on each side, five minutes on each side until it's nice and brown. You don't want to over, you don't want to burn those yeah. obviously. But you want it to be nice and flaky. This right here, if you have somebody who's, who doesn't care for fish, I bet they would like this dish. All right, now. Normally I'd have some fish stock, but I'm using clam stock here. And I don't know, let's go a cup of that. Now we're gonna start to reduce this down just a hair, this clam sauce, to really intensify those flavors. So once we get this going, and this reduces down just a little bit more, we're gonna take, oh, I don't know, three quarters of a cup of coconut milk, if you will. Cut me some limes for the juice. All okay. right, mean more than that, or how's that? That's Probably pretty good. Now we're gonna take some fish sauce and we're gonna put in, oh, I don't know. You smell that? That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna put like a half a teaspoon of that or a little bit okay. less, because it a little bit low, goes a long way. Yes. Hand me some soy sauce, right. if you will. About a half a teaspoon of that. Can I get you to shave me just a little bit of ginger in there? Sure. Or if you wanna hold that up. A little bit goes a long way here, but doesn't that smell good? They used a lot of coconut milk there, didn't they? Mm -hmm. A lot of cold soups. Now let's cut up just a little bit of cilantro. So we're gonna put two tablespoons of butter in here. Make it healthy. Now the last thing we're gonna do, if you wanna thicken that up with just a little bit of cornstarch. Now we could, this is up to you. Some people are curry fans, some people are not. We can put a little curry powder in here, just a tiny bit, a little dab will do you. Now these are all ingredients that are easily found. None of this stuff is terribly exotic any store that you go to, including our favorite store. That's right. I'll we'll have all these items. Now as that goes down a little bit more, I'm gonna put just a little bit of cilantro in here. And did you notice, as we travel around, almost everything was garnished with a little bit of corn. It was. Almost like canned corn. Even breakfast had a little Even spot breakfast. of corn. A little Everybody... corn here, a little corn right. here. So we gotta have corn. So now look how that's thickened wow. up, right? That looks really nice good. Nice and beautiful. How is that going to complement that fish? I'm ready. Is it ready? You're ready, aren't you? I'm ready. Like they did on the island. They did. They put corn on everything. A little bit of corn here. A little bit of corn there. Maybe a little roasted red pepper. You go, Mrs. Yeah. Farmer. You do the honors first. That looks amazing. Get some of your sauce there. I do need some sauce. Wow. Mm. Which you like the best, the restaurant's version or my version? I like yours better. You always make it better. That coating is really good. Wow. I like your sauce. Isn't that tasty? Yum. So, you've caught some striper. Like, come mm. You know, oh, that fish is a little strong. Let's give it to the neighbors. Don't! That's good. Don't! It's subtle. The flavors in there are so subtle. It's so delicious. Oh, wow. The crunch is unbelievable. I like the coating. The panko and the macadamia nut, when you, when you smell it cooking, it had that yeah. nice nutty flavor. We brought something home that you can't get at home. And now we put it right on the table, and that's gonna be our standard fare when it comes I like to that. fish. I like that. Now, speaking of traditions, mm -hmm. you're fixing something next that normally you would use strawberries. That's right. A lot of people don't think about making angel food cake. She does, and it's delicious. So let's eat a little bit more of this fish. And let's come back with your angel fruit cake with pineapple. Yeah, a little bit of strawberry and strawberries stuff. too. Let's take one more bite of this. We've got some cool shows coming up. I, you know what? I'm, I'm, I usually don't say this, but I'm looking forward to fall. Me too. I'm ready. Looking forward to some cool weather. We're going to do some outdoor projects. Now, somebody asked me the other day online. They said, "Hey, when are you going to do your root cellar?" 
And I said, as soon as I can find somebody under five thousand dollars. So I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to do some of that myself. All right, let's do our own. Because my arm's starting to heal up, and I can tape my hand. Uh oh. Around. I'm nervous for that. Around the. Uh, don't. I don't think that's a good idea. We're gonna try to get that yeah. done. We've talked about that forever, but they. I just don't want to pay five thousand no. dollars. And if we present something to you that you might want to do. I don't want it portal. to cost you an arm and right. So we're going to figure out how, how we can do that. And it's a little storm shelter, too. Yeah. So if the tornado's coming and, and you don't have You can go sit in there. I'll go sit in there. Right, <laughs> and and I'll sit with the animals, make sure they're good in the barn. All right. That's something we're still going to do, I promise. But I'm not spending $5,000 yeah. to do that. But now it's time for dessert. Me now, sweet. we're back to traditional stuff. Right. But not too many people make angel food cakes. Mm -hmm. They buy them at the store, so on and so forth. Right. And I, yeah, I wanted to make it by scratch, from scratch. Yes. It's mm -hmm. not that hard. I watched her do it, and it's delicious. So first of all, preheat your oven 375. Right. But being that we're doing a, we're just kind of scaling down because right. the kids are out now, so we're doing things just for us. If you want a bigger one, just step up your. I say triple it, but see, I found these cute little pans. Is that cute? That's cute. Yes, and it's like I think it's a two-man pan for dessert. Boom. So we're doing this. So this recipe, actually, if you were doing it in a regular size pan, you'd probably have to triple it. Yeah. Because a normal, what I liked about it is we have so many eggs. I was thinking, what do I do with my eggs? It oh, takes twelve eggs. egg whites. So I cut it into thirds. This recipe is in thirds because it's little, but you use a lot of. You need a dozen eggs just to make this. But that's why it's so good. But don't you use the the yolks later? For you, I make you scrambled yolk. For oh, breakfast. So that's why no. I got really, really orange eggs the other day. That's right. Oh. <laughs> that's what I had I left over. Put those two that's together. right. All right, how do we do this, Ms. All right, Farmer? I got this old sifter of my grandma's I love. And to start off, and it wants, I'm going to take. A... Can I say one thing real quick? Yeah. Isn't it nice to hold in your hand a piece of your family yeah. traditions? So you think about her every time you use this. I do. You know, it reminds me of the story that Ron Ellis wrote about his father. He remembers his father every time he hunts. He still has shotgun shells. That's right. With little notes in them. Every time his mm -hmm. dad would go out, he would write something and leave it as a time capsule right. for Ron to look at. That is neat. As you hold this in your hand, you're thinking about who? She did it. My grandma Solomon. And mom just sent me, this is my dad's mom, another box of her stuff. I love digging through old mm -hmm. stuff. Some really neat stuff. So yeah, I love it. The old sifter. It's to, to anybody else, this is just a piece of <laughs> steel. But to me, I'm picturing, I know what she looks like. She yeah. used this. She used the and sifter. She, cooked, she, right. was a good, she was a great cook. She was a good cook. All yeah. right, so we're going to start. And like I said, I've broken this into thirds because we're making a little. If you want to triple it, if you're making a real one. But this is a third of a cup of flour and one tablespoon. And then I'm also going to put a quarter a cup of sugar in here. Right. And we're going to sift those two together. I think a sifter's kind of fun. I don't ever usually use one. Now keep in mind, you did say cake flour. Which yes, is, cake. I oh, yes, I'm sorry, one. cake flour. Right. you got to use cake flour, not regular flour. And this can be kind of messy if you were dancing around the house doing it. Why would you dance around the house? <laughs> just because it's to see you. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Have you around, around the house right now? Yeah, I was this? dancing around the kitchen. With this. I want to see that. We're almost got all of it here. So I guess we're making this really fine and we're putting them together here. All right, so that's it. See how it's empty? I love it, put it back over here. And this is our sifted flour and sugar. I'm just gonna set it aside for now. Okay, now I'm gonna take four of our eggs. I'm gonna divide these up. I just want the whites. That was amazing, Mrs. Farmer. And I'm saving these for you. How would a one-arm guy do that? We have that little something that somebody That's gave right. us one. I forgot about that. But this is your breakfast tomorrow. I got you some yolks, is that good? It's perfect. Okay. All right, now to this we are gonna add a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar. And now we want just a little bit, so we're just gonna do a pinch of salt. A couple shakes. And then a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And how long do you whip that up? We're gonna, until it gets frothy. We're gonna see, we want it to stand up. See how it's kind of a little, stand up a little, it's a little thicker, that's what we want. You know what, I took the liberty of adding sugar to your Pineapples and strawberries. Yeah, we had a pineapple because this is a Hawaiian mm -hmm. day. So mm -hmm. we're sticking with the uh, theme, theme of the show. That's right. There. All right. Now remember the flour and sugar mm -hmm. we sifted. We're going to take that and we're going to put in. We're going to do it in sections here, and we're not going to beat that. You don't want to beat. So that. this is why your angel food cake is so spongy because everything is yes. really finely done. Yes. And Interesting. Isn't it fun to make it? By, I've always had a box or just bought it. See, I'm it. not a big baker. You're the baker. I find it fun to. I'm the candlestick maker. That's right. You're a baker. So 375, we're preheating. This only takes 35 minutes. See, with that little cute little pan we got. And this is, like I said, if you were making it in a regular size bump pan, you'd need to triple this. Yeah. So but this is just enough for us. For us, yeah. All right. 
get our little pan over here. And I'm gonna fill it up. Try not to be too messy. So you just smooth it out a little bit. What we're gonna do is, yeah, we just wanna get those, kind of get those bubbles out. And it is ready for the oven. Ooh, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Mm. All right, let's take that over there. Throw it in the oven. Let this cool down significantly. Yes, it's set for a while. And it's cooled down in here too. We might right. have a few moths flying around, but we don't care. We like moths. Mm -hmm. And if we get enough of them, we might make some soup. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's see how that comes out. Is I like it, your little. Isn't it cute? What hands. I like about look at it, it's going to just push right out of there. Yeah, I like that. Is that wonderful? You know what? You want me to decorate with a little fruit on top? Yeah. We, we don't want people to think that we're going to eat this whole thing, even though we probably will. It's just, it's a two man. It's a two man. Now that's pretty. Yeah, it's a two-man okay. cake. Is that cute or what? And it smells like heaven. Do you think that's what it's a got Hawaiian its cake? It's if my Hawaiian you say cake. So. Go ahead and cut some right. piece. There you go. Now look. Isn't look, that cute? Look at the consistency of that. Look at that. Is that not beautiful? It's light. And there's that is the dessert. perfect angel food cake. Angel food Hawaiian cake. Mm. Isn't that good? Look at the inside of it. How beautiful it is. The white. Look how light and fluffy that is. Food-wise. That was an interesting, fun show. Mm -hmm. That was probably, I don't know, one of the most interesting shows that we've done in a while as far as you know, stepping outside of our comfort zone and trying right. something we haven't tried before, which is what this show's all about. Mm -hmm. But if you liked this show and you wanted some more recipes like this, where would you go, Miss Farmer? I'd go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. You would not. Yes, I would. I do now. That's where I, find, that's where I, I get all my it. recipes. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> somebody, somebody said, hey, you got to do a cookbook. And I said, well, I've never written anything down. So now we have to write stuff down. Yeah. And so sometimes I go back and check. To see how we did I've, it. Because right. I've always measured it and you forget. That's right. But anyhow, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Hit subscribe. Mm -hmm. That way anything new that comes out will come right to you. And after you visited timfarmerscountrykitchen.com and you want to hang out and chat and talk and share jokes and all kinds of stuff, where would you go? Usually I'd take a nap or I'd go to Facebook. <laughs> Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page. That's right. All you gotta do is hit like. Boom, right. you're our friend. And we talk, We Monday mornings we share recipes with each That's other. Right. We get to see pictures of what other people are cooking. Mm -hmm. But you know what, right now, it's time for me to shut my trap, eat this cake, <laughs> and talk about the fact that it's all about good times, good friends, it's super good eats. We'll see you next week with a brand new Tim Barnes Country Kitchen. I might have did more of this. I like I'm the fruit. i eat all of it. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to... CKY Canoe Kentucky Furniture World Superstore Housewarmings Lodge Cast Iron Tater Knob Pottery and Farm